Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's video is on reservoir management. The learning outcomes of today's video are to define what reservoir management is. We're going to evaluate reservoirs usage, and then we're going to define reservoir operating cool curves and evaluate their potential pitfalls. Um, here we have the annual per precipitation in the entire United States. Um, the Eastern United States gets a lot more rain than the Western United States. And so um, in all of these locations, reservoirs are a useful tool to help um, spread out the usage of water and the delivery of water over a period of time. So reservoirs are an artificial lake. Typically a dam is constructed in a um, river valley and that impounds some volume of water with the purpose of spreading this flow of water over time. So you can imagine a scenario where we have no reservoirs on earth um, or in the United States. The second that rain hits, it's going to enter the river and then discharge into the ocean. And so the delivery of water is going to occur a lot faster. It's gonna be a large peak of flow here on our y-axis is going to um, re reach the ocean rather quickly um, and we won't be able to use it for purposes that human beings see fit. Um, with reservoirs, we're able to slow that flow of water over a longer period of time. And I'll note that the area under both of these curves should be equivalent because reservoirs do not create water. A lot of the rhetoric around water resource management in the Western United States is that we need to construct more reservoirs as if the amount of reservoirs that we have is inadequate, but reservoirs don't create water. They simply impound it. And there are rules and systems that govern when reservoirs release and hold water. So adding more reservoirs is not going to necessarily increase your access to water or the water uh, in an area. If water, if a region is experiencing water scarcity and they construct a reservoir, there's no water for that reservoir to impound. So it's basically a useless piece of infrastructure. So reservoirs spread water, the flow of water over time, but they do not create water in and of themselves. So this is where reservoir management comes in and reservoir management is a large part of water resource management because it is a great way to control water flows. Reservoirs are really ginormous infrastructure projects. And so to build them, it includes a wide variety of stakeholders that each have their own reason for when and how much water should be released. And so based on the priority of these stakeholders, the priority of these releases, that will dictate how the overall reservoir is operated. And that's when um, a water resource engineer comes into play and dictates when and uh, how much water gets released. So here in our photo, we have different multi-purpose reservoirs. Some are reservoirs that are built for water supply. And so um, water supply reservoirs often don't allow recreation on them because they don't want oil or things polluting this valuable water resource. Um, there are lots of reservoirs that are actually used to impound water during floods as a flood control measure. Uh, in the southern and uh, eastern United States, a majority of reservoirs are built to basically keep water from flooding nearby cities. And so it's used as a way to control excess water, whereas on the west, it's a way to control sort of um, an in excess of raw water and try and retain as much water as possible. Hydropower dams release when electricity usage is high. So in the mornings and evenings when people are using a lot of electricity, hydropower dams will turn on and release a lot more water um, to generate more electricity to help um, supply the need on the electrical grid. So that's very different than um, recreation just wants to maintain a constant water level to ensure that people have easy access to the water surface. Uh, and so based off of what you're trying to do with your reservoir, it's going to lead to a very, very different type of operation for um, your reservoir. So each reservoir is unique because it's in a different community. It's affecting a different population. And so that's when things get rather interesting, um, I like to think. Like 
reservoirs that are concerned with irrigation, their releases are going to come with the um, the flows and the the needs of the growing season. And so that is going to operate differently than um, any of the other reasons listed here. And all of these reasons can be needed for a reservoir. Some reservoirs are built for one purpose and some of them have multi-purposes that are competing with each other for um, what is being prioritized. And that's basically the outflow, the amount of flow that's being released from the reservoir. And all of that is dictated by a reservoir operating rule curve. So all these stakeholders meet very infrequently, maybe once every five years, 10 years. Um, there's usually a lot of people involved, some of them very powerful, influential, busy people uh, who don't have time to sit down and um, go over things like this. So this happens rather infrequently, but they basically vote and decide on a rule curve to dictate how the reservoir should be operated. So you see here, we have reservoir storage. This is the volume on our y-axis and then time on our t-axis or, or x-axis. And so in a non-flood season, um, your rule curve is the black one here. You're going to try and conserve water when it's not flooding. And then you're going to draw down, you're going to release water, which is going to cause a drawdown period. Um, and you're going to you're going to remove volume. You're going to free up space to allow the reservoir to fill up again for our flood season. And then during that flood season, the reservoir naturally refills. Um, maybe you withhold some releases because other areas in your region are getting water, so you don't need water from that reservoir at that moment. So this is your refill period during the flood season and then you enter sort of your conservation period um, between the flood and non-flood season. So the reservoir here in this case is impounding water um, during floods and non-flood season. So I could imagine it's used for agriculture uh, or water, um, drinking water, things like that. And so one thing to note is most, a majority of reservoirs, I think almost all reservoirs, this is a kind of a new thing in water resource engineering. They do not base water releases on weather predictions or a prediction of climate. Uh, and so our ability to predict when rains will come um, has gotten quite good in the last 10, 20, 30 years, um, but that hasn't changed how we operate reservoirs. So this is something that's been decided potentially years in advance and often independent of how much water is expected in that region at any given time. So let's say we're gonna experience a rather fl dry flood season and we arbitrarily draw down in anticipation of a flood season that never arrives. We now have a lot less water in our reservoir that was sort of arbitrarily decided based off of following this rule curve. But we have to follow the rule curve because it's something that all stakeholders have agreed on and could potentially cause like legal issues in the future. I wanna point out S max up here. This is the volume at which the reservoir will overtopple. And so in a lot of the California reservoirs during our atmospheric rivers, um, there is such an immense amount of rain that are entering these reservoirs that they actually need to release to maintain that maximum water level because once water overtops your reservoir, you could basically destroy it. And then um, once the reservoir is completely destroyed, you have the potential to kill um, hundreds of thousands of people uh, because lots of people live in downstream flood valleys and, and central valleys or um, pretty popular places to live and, and do work and perform agriculture. So the, the downside of that, the repercussions are pretty catastrophic. But that is something that's a part of the rule curve to make sure that we're not overtopping our reservoir, the storage max value, um, make sure that we're retaining within the design limits of the reservoir. So your rule curve is basically this black one here that decides when water is released 
and when water is withheld and maintained a, a water level. We do not need to know the other ones, but um, you'll enter different zone periods based off of the amount of water that's in the reservoir. So there is sort of some flexibility with weather patterns, but that's again, something that's been cited um, a very long time in advance. And so that concludes our video. Uh, I hope you have a better understanding of how reservoirs are operated and how they can be used as a useful tool in water resource management um, on a U.S. and a global scale. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, and I will see you next time.